Hey guys, what's going on? This is Tanner from TanManBaseballFan.com. Uh, I wanted to do a little video here for you all to uh, show you and maybe teach you a few things about eBay and, and sales prices. Um, I've uh, bought and sold probably about 10 million cards over the past decade, so I've gone through a lot of them. And I've heard a lot of uh, different price values that people would quote. And a lot of times what they would say is, well, um, this whatever card, uh, this SP Jeter rookie should be, is valued at $300 because that's what they're going for on eBay. And typically whenever somebody says, quote unquote, that's what they're going for on eBay, they really mean that's what people are trying to sell it for. And I try to tell them, well, you know, shoot, I could put up a 93 SP Jeter on eBay and, uh, put $400,000 as a price tag. And I can say by that logic that my 93 SP Jeter is going for $400,000. Um, you know, that's not the case, obviously. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look and find out what uh, cards have actually sold for. Because also eBay is not really too reliable in terms of uh, sales data if you just look at what's sold because they won't show what the best offer price is anymore. So I will show you a few websites that you can get that information and even have some more information as to who purchased certain items. So what we're going to do just to start off with, we're going to go for a 1996 uh, select mirror gold search. And we're going to go ahead and uh, set this to baseball, the baseball card category. And looks like there's some people are saying... 95 Greg Maddox, for instance, cheaper than 96. So that way, when somebody searches 96, that comes up. We're going to go ahead and take that off. We're going to do that by doing this. We're going to do the subtraction button, 1995. And that brings us to 174 So uh, results. So as you can see, there is a lot of uh, listings here. There are tons of uh, 1996 select uh, certified mirror gold cards right now. Uh, unfortunately, none of them are for the one that I want. I want the Jose Canseco. So if anybody has that out there, please let me know. I would appreciate it. So anyways, right now you see there's 174. And so we'll take a look at some of the prices here. Uh, obviously, people are trying to sell like, uh, well, this Jeter, that's probably going to go for astronomical amounts right there. So there's, I think this has several days left and it's already up to 1825 with bids. We're not going to be looking at the bid one. So let's go to um, the buy it now only. And so you see the first one that comes up is an Alex Rodriguez and they've got 10% off and that's set to uh, about 4,500 bucks. So not sure they're going to get that, but anyhow, uh, there's a Biggio for 1200, Mo Vaughn for 300. Ray Lankford for 500, but that's a PSA 10. Um, and then you, you see some for 55, then 90, uh, 80, 480, 80. Let's see what the lowest ones are here. Let's go to low. We're going to, we're going to do a sort, uh, price plus shipping lowest first. So we'll see what people have this for. So there's a lot of them there. Looks like they're, they're at 40. So which is fine, of course, you know, you can, as a seller, you can obviously ask whatever you want. Um, as you go up higher, there's some that go more for 60 or closer to the, uh, closer to 80 rather. And, uh, again, anybody can ask whatever they want and that's fine. Um, I'm not sure if an Alan Bennis collector would be willing to pay 80 bucks for that or Jeff Sapan, uh, 80 for that. I don't know. Um, player collectors are, you know, kind of tricky. I should certainly know that, but, uh, John Waston. So these are basically the common. So really any seller could point to this and say, well, you know, they are quote unquote going for $80. And so, you know, you've got to ask yourself, really, is that, is that true? Especially when there's several that are selling for 40 as well. So let's take a look and see what the sold listings go for. So you see some of them here, they've gone for 30, 33, 40, 40, 40. So a lot of them have sold for 40, it looks like. Um, now let's take a look at this for, for example. Uh, this Biggio, it says that best offer was accepted for $750. So we're not really sure exactly what that really did sell for, right? So let's go 
to another website here and this is going to be watchcount.com before we do that let's go to sortsub.com here okay clear that sorts of is a website that actually shows I believe it takes about six hours or so um, for the real prices to hit but um, let's uh, type this in 1996 certified gold Vigio so right now it looks like there are four of them online uh, currently and remember it said that it sold for 750 uh, best offer whatever it was so we're going to go to this drop down here, click completed, recent price. See it went for $390 apparently. And this, yeah, it was a PSA 10 also. So, you know, the, the prices seem to be a little misleading here. You have a prime example of a card that sold for $390 where uh, there are, let's see, four others and they're all at least... Uh, double that and sometimes triple in terms of price and uh, none of them are the PSA 10s so and that I'm not picking on the Vigio collectors at all because it very well could be that the or I'm sorry the Vigio sellers because it very well could be that somebody got a fantastic deal on this uh, this PSA 10 Vigio so here it is right here and it shows you it's, it sold for best offer of 390 it's very helpful to know this stuff um, really from a, uh, uh, a buyer's perspective and a seller's perspective. So that way you have a better idea of what somebody was willing to pay for it. But there could be a whole lot more to it than meets the eye. So the, the buyer and seller could have been talking back and forth and they could say, hey, let's work this in as part of a deal. Um, I'll sell this to you for $390 if you get these other cards as well. So you can't say for absolute fact that no strings attached. This card sold for $390. Um, another uh, thing that would help here is what we're going to do is we're going to look for the item number. So here this is. And then we're going to go to watch count, watchcount.com. It's up here. So in keywords, I'm going to put the item number and click show me what's popular. And take a look at this. This has the same information, but it also shows you the start time and the end time. Okay, so it looks like this was up for um, about a week is what it looks like. So it is probably, uh, you could probably uh, tell that just based on this, that um, this wasn't a fluke or a mistake that somebody accidentally put the price up to uh, too low. Because a lot of times if a card goes too low, then that means that the start time and end time will be very close. Uh, especially for a very popular player. Um, one other thing that you can use with this is you can click on history and take a look. You have a list of the offers. Now this isn't a hundred percent accurate either. Uh, sometimes it won't record this data, but and, and of course eBay stars out the the bid, so you'd have to kind of have a good idea of who your competition is to begin with. And one way to do that is to take a look at the feedback amount. If you know a seller that has like the feedback of 6496 and they have an underscore as well as a one inside of their username, then you can tell who bought it. And so that is valuable information for a number of reasons. Um, the main one is if you really want a card that sold, you could actually go to this person, um, whoever this person is, and say, you know, hey, I, I missed that Biggio. I would really love it. Um, to me, it's worth, you know, $700 or something. Would you take 700 for it? And, you know, they might say, well, yeah, that's, you know, certainly I do that. That's $310 more than I had bought it for. Um, so anyways, but th that's very helpful because now you're not just stuck with this right here. Like, okay, it was the best offer of 750 whatever it was. You actually have real sales data. You've got something, um, Number one, that you know exactly uh, how much it went for. And then you also have how long it was up for sale. So um, as also as far as sellers go for these other folks that have these other Biggios, again, I'm not picking on them at all. I mean, it's a beautiful card. 
And there may very well be a Vizio uh, collector out there that it's worth these prices to them. But uh, anyways, if somebody does make an offer for Vizio on one of these without knowing that one sold for $390 and it was up for a week and it was a PSA 10, they might have an offer of 600 and they might respond with, oh, you guys are crazy. I'm, there's no way I would take several hundred dollars off. But now if they know that one sold for 390 and somebody offers 300 or 400, they might think about it more, uh, more differently. So um, anyways, I hope that helps people. That's uh, helped me tremendously in terms of uh, bargaining and, and determining the real value of cards. Um, so anyways, again, this is Tanner from TanManBaseballFan.com. If you have any questions about the stuff, please feel free to reach out to me. I uh, hope you like and subscribe uh, to my video, uh, my YouTube channel at YouTube.com forward slash TanManBaseballFan. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope to hear from you soon.